Welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. It is June. Not sure what it is, but it's June. No, I'm kidding. It's 19th. Or it's, um, in Texas, we're celebrating. It's called something else. Anyway, because we finally got, well, we're a little slow here in Texas. I think everybody knows that. We're finally celebrating that this is the day the slaves had freedom. But it was actually not this date. It was earlier to the rest of the country, but Texas was a little slow. So this is the day we're celebrating freedom for from slavery. And that's a great thing. Nobody should be in bondage to somebody else. That's craziness. Okay, so three topics we're going to start off with. Um, the first, we're going to talk about paper in general, paper I use, paper that you can use, the easiest way to do this. And mine is a little different than yours because I'm actually creating the paper and I create the paper on paper that my um, grader gives me. But it's really very, very similar to an office supply paper pad, like something you'd get from Staples, something you'd get from Office Max. That paper that comes on a pad, it's very, very similar in weight to that. What I'm going to suggest you do, because this is how you get the pattern, and the tissue is not really durable. I've shown this several times before, but I want to show it again at a central place because it's a great thing for everyone to know. You're going to take the tissue, and what I would do is I would place it right on a muslin. And don't cut it all out. Just whatever piece you're using, whatever size you're using, place it right onto your muslin. Take a Sharpie, and it has to be a Sharpie, and it has to be not the fine fine, but this says Sharpie fine point. There's a one that's really, really sharp and it'll actually tear right through the tissue. This is actually a marker. And what you're gonna notice is I'm going to draw right on the tissue. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the tissue on top and your muslin underneath. You're gonna draw right on the tissue, right on the size that you think you want to use. And when you'll take it away, what you'll see is it will go right through to the muslin underneath. You'll have a nice sharp line, but it doesn't um, desert, you know, it doesn't disintegrate or it doesn't, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but anyway, it doesn't do anything to the tissue. So you can trace more than one time and you're still gonna be okay, but it takes it right onto the muslin below and you can see there's a clear black line exactly where I drew. So that's what I, I would highly recommend. You go by markers, take your tissue, put it right onto the muslin. It doesn't even have to be muslin, it can be any cloth. Anything that's, you know, that you can see it with. If you're doing a knit, it can be right onto the knit below. The marker will go through the tissue without ruining the tissue. That's the information you need. Then I can make up the muslin. I can make up the muslin, I can use the muslin as my pattern, I can hang the muslin on my pattern hanger, great way to categorize the patterns. Okay, that's our recommendation. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is darts. Just, just, just briefly. What I want to say about them is, and, and the other topic we're going to talk about tonight is a full bust adjustment. FBA. I've learned what it is. You guys have asked me so many times. It catches me off guard. I now know what it is. And I'll tell you why I didn't know what it was. Because in pattern making, you don't have adjustments. You change the pattern. You know, so all these adjustments, I never learned any of them because in my days in college, I learned how to make patterns. So I, I was never in the sewing world. You have to be kind of in the sewing world to know about these adjustments because they've been created by the sewing world. They've been created, I actually Googled full bust adjustment and I've spent quite a bit of time on this figuring out who created it and who started it. I, I didn't trace it back. I'm sure I could have if I spent more time, but I decided it doesn't make a difference. Before I do that and talk about full bust adjustment, so what I want you to know is I've learned it and I can teach it to you as to what it lacks and then you all can make decisions about that. Um, I do want to talk about darts briefly because, again, we have this, it seems like as a sewing community, we have this alienation against darts, and I, I don't understand it. I don't need to understand it. I just want to tell you from a pattern making perspective, a dart is our best friend. It's, it's helpful. It's, it does a great little job in a short little amount of time. It's very, very helpful. While I was Googling full bust adjust adjustments, I listened to a lot of different educators teach you how to do a full bust adjustment. And some of the things I heard were very disturbing to me, and they were absolutely false. One of the things I heard was that designers don't want to do darts and plaids. That's just bogus. That's absolutely not true. So 
if you would, if you're not sure about this, take some time, Google Giorgio Armani plaid jackets for women, and you'll see all kinds of darts in plaids because they just the, the plaids are matched beautifully, but you can very clearly, even online, you can see the darts in the plaid, in plaid shirts. Um, you know, if you don't have a dart in a plaid shirt, then you, it looks just like a man. And, and companies who do men's and women's, they want to have a difference between the two. They just don't want to take their men's division and put it on their women's. They have some pride in the differences and they want them to be right. So you can see plenty of information. I've also paid attention to when you have a plaid jacket by Armani, for instance, the darts are not even included in the description, even though you can very clearly see, because it would be like saying, this jacket has a shoulder seam, side seam, darts, you know, they're just part of the construction. They're part of the base. That's how the apparel industry looks at them. They don't look at them as a feature or a description that the average individual would appreciate or understand. So they're not even listed in there, even though they're very obviously in there. So I would advocate that you not listen to anybody but yourself. You can clearly Google plaid by Armani, plaid by Ali Tahari, do plaid by several different people, designers, and then go in and you can see that very clearly that there's no fabric that makes a designer shy away from a dart. It's just part of the garment, it's part of the construction. Okay, having said enough on that. Then with a full bust adjustment, um, I've taught you and tried to repeatedly, and I do want to tell you that we want to entertain questions on these topics, on these three topics of the marker and the tissue, the darts in plaids or in, in printed fabrics, and then also a full bust adjustment because what we want to do on these topics when I pick them like this is we want to flush them out all the way so that we don't have to come back to full bust adjustment. Again, we're going to put this in the description on the website. So if you're looking for full bust adjustment issues, you can go into this particular webcast. Okay. Okay. So we want all the questions now. It's a good time. So let me go through the full bust adjustment. And what I've done is I've got a little bodice here and I've got a little picture of the darts. And when you make a full bust adjustment, you cut, you cut, you spread, you spread, and you angle. All right. If you notice that what I have defined differently than probably anyone else, I have defined fit for you. And I've said many times in lectures, don't use the word fit. Fit is too generic. Fit is nondescript. Fit is um, not appropriate to communicate to me what is wrong. And I know it's a generic term of frustration, that you are frustrated at the problem. But to tell me it doesn't fit, it simply tells me you're unhappy. It gives me no indicator as to what is wrong. And many of you in response to that have said, we don't know what's wrong. Help, help, help. I get it. So I've given you guides and I've broken fit down into a definition when it is the length, circumference, and depth of the garment matches the length, circumference, and depth of your pattern. And if it's length, that's a problem. If it's circumference, that's a problem. If it's depth, that's a problem. Each of those has um, indicators that will tell you which one is the problem. And one of the most important thing we can do when we're dealing with patterns is deal with one of those at a time. If we ever deal with all three at one time, then we can't possibly fix the one issue. It'll be a domino effect to cause other problems to the other issues that are not wrong. Okay, so having said that, you need to clearly understand what I just said. We want to make sure we can control length individually, circumference individually, and depth individually. When we cannot, that is a concept that we want to get rid of, that we want to throw away, because it cannot benefit us to have to change all three at one time. And I've gone through and explained to you many times in our home sewing industry the methods of alteration that I have seen, that's the problem with them. They change all three at one time without separating out which one is the problem and then giving me an answer. With a full bust adjustment, that's exactly the problem. So the full bust adjustment comes up and cuts up here and cuts over here and then spreads down one piece. I think it's the front. It, it moves down 
the front and causes more length in one section of the front but not in another section of the front. So, you know, I mean, it adds length, it adds circumference, and it adds depth. It adds all three is what a full bust adjustment does. By every one that I watched, it adds length, it adds depth, it adds circumference. And it adds it in such a way that it is not consistent to any problem that it's representing. And what probably bothered me more than anything is you're supposed to make this adjustment by measuring as opposed to draping. Now again, my background is ready to wear. Never do we change patterns, tear patterns up, move patterns until we have draped it and know what we're doing. You know, I don't want to get crazy or condescending. I don't want to do any of that stuff. But if you just look at it logically, I think you will clearly understand why it hasn't worked and why it doesn't work. And that's, I, I guess that's the best way of me saying it. I think what surprised me is it was rampant. It's everywhere. It's like it actually works. If it works, it's absolutely luck that it works. Whenever you change three things at one time, it's absolute luck that it that it works. Like it's like driving a car and and being low on gas but not having a gas tank. And so you change the tires and you fix the brakes and you fill it with gas. And it works. But you didn't need to change the brakes and you didn't need to change the tires. It just so happened that one of those three worked. So it's a lot of effort and it's not going to guarantee that it works. It might, I would rather know what's wrong and be able to change exactly what it is and then move forward. Okay. Could you not just include correct bus size in a sloper you create, then get the pattern to fit the sloper? Yeah, but there's a lot of terms being thrown around here that we need to be very careful of, okay? And, and again, I, I worry that sometimes I see terminology that is not used correctly. And so I'm going to kind of clarify that question. This is a sloper. A sloper is the base that's been adjusted to fit a body, therefore it's called a sloper. A sloper has two darts, a bust dart and a waist dart, in their primary positions. There's very few garments that we wear that has bust darts in these primary positions. So if you fix them in this sloper, every time you went to do something, you would have to move them, and, cr and that's pattern making. So if you're pattern making, yes, that answer would work. But I don't, I don't even want to start from this base every time I start something. It's an enormous amount of time when time is like the, our most precious commodity. At least for me it is. Time is my most precious commodity. So to go back to the sloper and work off of this every single time we went to do something takes up, I think, more time than is necessary. Um, other questions? Let's kind of flush this out if you don't mind and let me know if there's something I'm saying that's contrary to what you think so we really can kind of make the best of this. I, I want you to have enough information for yourself so that you can, when you hear information that's not accurate, you can sort out for yourself why it's accurate or why it's not. I don't want to tell you it is or it isn't. I want to tell you why it isn't or why it is so that again you can discern this for yourself no questions conversation going on okay we have another question how do we get it i'll get, I'll get this and we can come back yeah any question that's unrelated to this you guys just email me those personally peggy at silhouettepatterns.com email me them Again, and the reason being is because so many of us as viewers, we have all levels of viewers. We have some that are brand new, some that have been around for 20 years, some that are somewhere in between. And so we want to make the most of this question and answer. And so that way, if you email me the, the questions individually rather than using this format, then I could put them together. If they need to go on the FAQ page, we'll put them there. If they're not being answered, we'll put them here. And that's the best use of this time where, you know, some have said to me they just skip right through the questions and answers. 
And I think that's a bad thing because there's questions and answers that will help them because they turn around and ask me a question that was in the questions and answers. So we're just trying to kind of guide everybody um, as to where the best places to go to get the most current information. Okay? The back of my wrap? All right. And we'll, we'll talk about it tonight because I'm really excited. And if we have no more questions or we feel like we can come back to those questions in the beginning. But I had just a lot of fun. I just had so much fun creating activewear. And <laughs> again, selfishly, I always think this is so much fun to do because I've got some great looking activewear <laughs> here that I'm gonna have a lot of fun wearing and I'm gonna be the best dressed kid on the block. Um, with activewear, for me, I always want a cover up of some kind. I always want a cover up. It's just because I get hot, I take something off, and then as I cool down, I want to put it back on. So I like cover-ups, and I think cover-ups are just as important as the active wear. So the wrap I have on, we're going to do that a little bit later, but I want to go through each of these things and just kind of show you some ideas. We had some great fabric in. Um, we just put it up on the site today. It's called Second Skin. It is all that, uh, that poly that is used for the wicking poly. It's all used for active wear. It's fabulous to work with. It's fabulous to sew on. This is um, kind of a dark brown color. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just beautiful. I had a lot of fun mixing it with some of the fabrics we already had and, and making some fun little outfits with it. So this particular outfit is the first one I did and I did a little shorty and I, I just used the, the yoga pant. So when I mixed it up, this is 314, except I kept it simple. No band at the bottom, no band at the neck. I just kept it simple. These were very fast and very easy to create. I used then the pant, 3413, it has the side panel because the sides could match. And then of course I did the contrasting band. No advantage to doing that contrasting band. I just you had a yard of each fabric so I was trying to balance out whatever fabric I had left so that two yards could do the whole entire outfit. And like I said, it was just really fun, really easy, and really smart looking. What I really like about it is that when I'm doing it, you can really decide how long you want your pants to be, how long you want your sleeves to be. All of these decisions are mine to make and I can base them off my comfort level if I want to put a little pocket. There are pockets in this particular pant I didn't put them in. Whenever I go anywhere, ride a bike, do whatever I do, um, I always have a little fanny pack or a little shoulder bag on. So I always have something. So I don't really put it in my clothes um, because I don't need it. But it's completely up to you. You guys know how to do zippers. You know how to do all that. For this particular outfit, because it had little shorts on, the little shorts are kind of close to the body, the yoga pants, I made them a little smaller than typically they would be. And so I decided for me on this particular outfit, a skirt would be what I'd put on over it. This is just a little mesh skirt. It's really fun. It's just got the two inch elastic at the top and all I did was take two yards, gather it into the elastic and I've got a little skirt that I could put on over it so that I don't have to run around in my little gym shorts. I can put on a little skirt. That little skirt goes below my knees and it covers up and makes me feel like I could kind of, I can't say go anywhere, but <laughs> I would say definitely be more comfortable as to where I wanted to go. Okay, um, a, a couple, a month or so ago. Questions, are we okay still? Okay. What pattern is the top? The top pattern is 314, the bottom is 3413, and the little skirt was no pattern. It's just a piece of elastic or two inch wide elastic and then it's just gathered right onto the elastic. You just literally make one seam and gather it in and it's a cute little skirt. You could use the yoga skirt. I did use the yoga skirt on this one because it's perfect for, again, just kind of covering up. And it really, um, I think it kind of looks like you're actually dressed. It's amazing how, how dressed up you can be or look in workout clothes. I thought that was kind of fun. I'm gonna go over to this one for a little bit, my stripe. Um, so when we talk about yoga and yoga wear and, and all the active wear and things we're doing, one of the things that's really popular in this country that we've done quite a bit of, and I did one about a month ago, are these walks. And so they're kind of fundraisers for whatever 
um, fundraiser the walk is for mine was a 16 mile walk and it certainly uh, my, mine was actually at night Our, this walk was at night so there was different conditions that I was thinking about when I was deciding what to wear and I had this outfit and I had made this outfit and I just was so excited about it so the bottom part is the yoga pant so I didn't mind being seen in public with my yoga pants and my tennis shoes what I did is I made a tank top out of that matching fabric and the tank top I knew in walking that I'd get hot and so I wanted a cover up but I wanted to be able to take that cover up off so then what I did is this was my this is my little cover up has a little hoodie uh, the night that we were walking there was supposed to rain so if it rained I had a little hoodie I kind of felt like I was all prepared in a pack I even had a little pocket here if I wanted to put things in so I really, I mean, you know, I, I felt like I was really well prepared and yet I felt like I looked somewhat fashionable all at the same time. It was really fun. So this is 917. This is the new little top we have. The little tank underneath is 500 and then just a yoga pant. So they're patterns you all have already. It's just a matter of pulling them together and doing the top and the tank out of the same and kind of mixing up the fabrics. Just really a fun little workout. But again, if it was a summer day and I just wanted to throw on something to be comfortable quickly, I could throw that on. And I think I'm always wanting to dress quickly. I don't know if it's just because my schedule's way too busy or what. But sometimes I'm just wanting to dress quick, but I don't want to look like I dressed quick. So if the pieces are already there, you can just grab them really quick and be ready. And that's, that's kind of fun. That's kind of nice. All right, so this one... Um, I love this one as well. I just really, really like it. I love the colors in it. Um, this has underneath here a little Band-Aid um, bra, little Band-Aid bra, they call them. And I'm going to say that, well, Band-Aid might not be the right term. The, the little tank top, this is what it looks like. I'm not going to show it. It's underneath there. But it's the same as this one. Okay, and this one, I'm going to show you here in a little bit. So ideally, if I wanted to work out, I could just wear that, and this is my little cover-up. So I use this as my cover-up. It's Giorgio's top. I did the front with, um, it's a printed second skin, and then I did the sides matching to the little capris. And these little capris are adorable. As I went around and saw a lot of different capris and different yoga pants and different things you could do. Now these are the leggings. These are not yoga pants. These are actually leggings. But what I did do is I put a little um, gusset in this inside. And I know you probably can't see that, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Can we kind of see that sort of? There you go. When I look into the camera, I look backwards, I get all confused. But anyway, so that's just a gusset right inside there. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I don't believe, as we've kind of had a, some conversation about this in the past, I don't think that gusset gives any more mobility. It does change the position of the seams and can make a pant more comfortable, especially if you're riding a bike because you no longer have a seam uh, rubbing against the seam. It's, it's misplaced into two different places, but it's to the side of your body rather than in the center of your body, somewhat more comfortable. Okay, so this is how we're gonna make it. Do we wanna stop first? No, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pants pattern and we're gonna cut off the inseam seam allowance on the front as well as the back. So I just reduced that seam allowance by three eighths, or I get that was that's what I was using. I was using our legging pattern, fifty nineteen, and I put that together. However wide you want to make it is totally up to you. It's your call. I in this particular one decided that I would go two inches up here, two inches this way, and draw a little V. All right, so there you have it. You can see that little V. 
So then you're just going to cut here. You're going to cut here. And that's going to be my pattern, but I'm going to put this on the fold. Now when you put it on the fold, you've got kind of a straight line between here to here. Don't worry about that. It doesn't have to be exact. Just include it and, and put it on the fold. You've got to add seam allowance, not here. You've got to add seam allowance here, seam allowance here. And then you've got to add your seam allowance back to these two other places that you took it away, here and here. So when you go to sew it now, you sew the back, you sew the front along those original lines, and then this is a fold and it's a piece and you're gonna, you're gonna sew it right in here and right in there. And then you're gonna pick up the inseam and sew the inseam and you'll do it on both sides because remember this is a fold, it's gonna go this way. Very easy to do. Even if in this explanation you say, well, I don't really understand that, just do it. It's just very, very easy to do. There's this gusset, it changes where the seaming is and it could be more comfortable for you. I love the little shorts. I can't really tell you that I've noticed they're more comfortable or less comfortable. Um, I don't even know that I'd do it again even in bike riding because my biking shorts are comfortable for me and they've always had a seam. But I know I've been asked about this before and I wanted to kind of show you how to do that. All right? Okay. Now, any questions? You want to stop for a second? If I find a garment I want to sew but I have no pattern, would I not want to start with a sloper if I did not have a comparable silhouette pattern? I would not, no. I would start with a pattern that was closest to that garment. If you start with a sloper, then you're, you're, you're completely, it depends on what you want to do. Now keep in mind, we're a pattern company. So um, most of you, most of what I hear is you don't want to make the pattern. You want us to do it for you. If you decide you want to make the pattern, I still wouldn't start with a sloper because starting with a sloper, again, a sloper has no ease. Supposedly, a sloper has no ease. I would want to start with a pattern that has ease in it already. So that's why when we talk about the bases we have, 195 is our base. It's not a sloper. It's already a fashion pattern that has ease built into it. 600, it's not a sloper again. It has a fashion pattern that has ease built into it. So no, I would never go back to that sloper. I haven't gone back to my sloper for 20 years. It doesn't matter what I want. I go back to the closest base and I build off that. Okay, I hope that helps. I find it confusing when some talk about a sloper and others talk of a base. What's the difference? A sloper by definition is a pattern, the, the basic, there's five basic pieces. And the sloper is one of these five basic. It's the bodice front, the bodice back, skirt front, skirt back, and sleeve. Those are your slopers. A sloper by definition has already been adjusted to fit a body, so that means there's been some adaptation put to them so that they would fit the body they're meant to fit. A base is a, um, a sloper that's been taken and had a style and ease built into it. So if I showed you my original slopers, they would not look like my bases because we've changed the styling and we've added ease or taken away ease. One of those two things. So hopefully that will help you. A, a, the best example I can think of is, for instance, a jacket. A jacket comes, is a, our base is 1950 or 1900, doesn't matter. They're both the same. They come off of the sloper of 600 because I only have five sloper pieces. Bodice front, bodice back, skirt front, skirt back, sleeve. So how am I gonna get a jacket if I only have five pieces? They use the bodice front, the bodice back, you put them on top of a skirt front and a skirt back and cut them off to make them longer, and then use the sleeve. So you use all five pieces. But then I add ease, I add design, I add all of those things to get to a jacket, and now I call that my base jacket. But I don't go back to the sloper when I want to design another jacket that's another style, I go back to the base. I think that was probably a better definition of what I was trying to say. Sometimes in these, when I don't have a chance to think about it, I might 
say something that causes you guys confusion. So I appreciate you asking again so I can kind of come back and clarify. Okay? Can you explain what causes camel toe LCD? That would be L. The length is too short and so it cuts up the body. Okay? Okay. All right. But adding a gusset won't prevent camel toe because if the gusset's too short, you will st it'll still put a wedge in the body. It's just a matter that it displaces the seam. It's really more for comfort and, and wearing it against something else. Okay? Okay. All right, so that's this one. Again, I'm the beneficiary because I just love these fabrics. They're beautiful to sew on. They're very easy to sew on, and I really like them. All right, then also what I did is a little while ago I had this little top that I did and I want to reintroduce it because it's just the tank top is all it is. I made it exactly like the tank top is. There's a dart, all of that stuff. Um, you can see my Calvin Klein elastic. So what I did is I went to a secondhand store. I bought a pair of Calvin Klein men's underwear that had a nice wide band of elastic. I cut it off. Um, and my Calvin Klein, this is a $40 top that has Calvin Klein on it. And mine, you know, cost probably five. So, you know, this is, there's, if you like the names on it, if you feel like you want to have some kind of designer um, active wear, this is a great way to do it because you could also put this up the side of a leg. There's lots of different things you can do with it. You can scream Calvin Klein or whoever you want to all over. You can stick it all over the place. I even saw one that was kind of on an angle. You could, one of the reasons I did the webcast, no, it wasn't a webcast, but it was a, a Monday video, and I talked about fitting seams and design seams, and that fit had built, fit, you know, darts built into it, and that design seams did not. And the whole reason, that was kind of a precursor to this, so you could see there's a lot of leggings out there that are kind of cut all, cut up different colors added and put back together. You can design those and do whatever you want because they're just design seams. You take your leggings, you cut them apart, you put in different fabrics, you add seam allowance and you sew them back together. And you can do as many strikes and all different kind of things that you want to do. So it's clearly an easy and fun project to do if you feel like you want to do that. This particular top I wore with, if you'll remember these little um, button leggings we did a little while ago. This was the Lululemon fabric that I used. Love this fabric. Love these little leggings. These are a great workout legging also to use these. So the little top can be worn with these leggings. And then again, because we're just really close to the body and really covering a lot up, I did a little cover-up. And this little cover-up, in fact, this little cover-up, we, it's called Casey's Five-Way Top. It's number 112. I say we stole it. We borrowed it <laughs> from a yoga company. It was a yoga company wrap that it was borrowed from because it was worn so many different great ways and great for after you finish yoga or after you finish whatever exercise you're doing, you could put it on and just continue without your day. Different ways of wrapping it would mean different things. And remember that what I did is I put the zipper in the back so that you could actually unzip it and you even create more fun with it. So right here at the center, we put that little zipper so that it would create more variety for you. All right? All right, so the other one that I wanted to show you, a great cover-up, and I've used it several times, especially if i am just got a crazy busy day and then i am just got to run and meet somebody for dinner and I there's just no way in the traffic I have time to get home and get back. So I've kept this little coat handy, and I was reminded of it um, in our workshop over the weekend, I was in Pinehurst, and one of the ladies had this coat on, and she made her muslin in black. And I mean, it was incredible. Everybody was like, oh, that's your muslin? Like, you don't want to keep your muslin. I'll take your muslin. We were all offering to take it off our hands. It was so fabulous. The comment, this is pattern 1855. It's called, um, I don't know, I think Brett will be nice enough to get that name for me here in just a minute, 1855. Swing it's called the Swing Jacket. Thank you, he's fast. Um, so many of the ladies in the class said, oh gosh, like I thought that collar would just be too much for me or too thick or too whatever. It just wasn't. We ha I think everybody in the class tried this jacket on and it was just amazing how beautiful it was on everyone. 
but it is meant to be an accessory. So you don't want to close the jacket, you just want to put it on over a tank, over a pair of leggings, and really just wear it as an accessory. It's just the best way for it to be, and it is really great looking. So it's got a nice beautiful pleat in the back, very easy to make, not difficult to make at all, not a lot of fitting to it. So it's a great piece to use as an accessory item. Okay. Could you discuss the pleat, the last sewing step in the instructions for 917? The pleat step, yes, I can. Um, let me show this to you because this pleat comes down and it's a little tricky down here to show this. So how this works is the pleat itself becomes the hem. So once the sleeve is attached, you take and form this little pleat here, and the pleat is the width of the seam allowance. So you see as you sew there, it makes a pleat right over the cuff, and it goes right into the hem. It comes around, and you see you pleat it again. So as you're turning it, you just turn it up that amount and go right through, and all you're doing was, is folding that over. So there it is on the inside, you can just see that little pleat there. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be done exactly like this. I did it like this because that's what the original garment was and I really liked it, but certainly doesn't, you know, doesn't have to be. But the, the pleat is actually the hem of the sleeve, if that makes sense. And it's done as the very last step. Okay, what is the second skin fabric wicking? Oh, is the second skin fabric wicking? Yes, it is. It is. Second skin is just, I believe, um, it is a fabric from Switzerland. And it is a fabric that is imported from Switzerland, as I was told by my guys in New York, that is, they've said better than wicking, but I, I'm not going to go there. But it is a wicking fabric, and it is used for athletic wear, and I felt lucky to get it. It's going to go quickly. Like I said, I felt lucky to get it. And all we have is all we have. I've got kind of a notice out to please send more. It's not expensive. Um, our, I'm in love with our Lululemon just because of kind of how we acquire fabric sometimes is what it cost us. But this wicking fabric is really cool. It's soft. It's really nice to sew on. It's beautiful to wear. Uh, I just really like it. I, I mean, I know you'll like it. Don't store it. Like, get it made. Okay? Okay. Should I add seam allowances around the gusset? If you cut the seam allowances off, anytime you cut a pattern into two pieces, you have to add seam allowance back to sew it back together. So yes, you would have to add seam allowance. Okay. So we're going to make the wrap I have on. This is Georgia's wrap. That's not the state of Georgia, because we are actually in North Carolina. Georgia, J-O-R-J-A, Georgia. Georgia is our customer, and I think of all of us at the workshop, we were in Pinehurst over the weekend. I'm not sure of this, but I think that we were very inspired by Georgia. And the reason we were inspired is because Georgia, I'm not sure exactly, I think she's my age. She's never sewn before. She just bought a sewing machine at the beginning of this year. She actually started buying fabric before she bought a sewing machine because she loved fabric. And we can all relate to that. We love fabrics. So she finally decided she was going to sew and she bought a sewing machine as well. And it's very interesting because I've said to you all so many times that you have all these years, and, and I got an email today, a woman said to me, I've been sewing 62 years and da 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 da, and isn't this da 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 da? And you know, she was talking about 5 eighths inch seam allowances and she just can't get away from 5 eighths inch seam allowances. And I said, look, the only thing I can tell you is for many, many women who have talked to me that once you make the leap and get to 3 eighths, you never go back to 5 eighths. I, I don't know of anyone who has said to me, oh, I just hate 3 eighths, I've got to have 5 eighths. Once you get through that curve, it's uncomfortable in the beginning. So my point being is for many of you, you have a lot of information in your head that is not accurate. You know it's not accurate, um, but you still hold on to it and you still repeat it. You still have a tendency to lean on it because 
I don't know. I don't really know why. You know, we've said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And yet we know that, but we still have a tendency to do it. Well, this little Miss Georgia, she is not like that because she doesn't have that. So all she has is the information that I've given her. And I'm telling you, she's just sailing her own seas. It's so exciting to see how quickly she can get through all this stuff because she doesn't have the negative information. All she has to do is practice sewing and practice her stitching and, you know, get better. We all have an advantage because we've sewn for 50 years and we can stitch. So she has to learn that. So this is the George's wrap, and, and she had it on, and we all went cuckoo over this wrap, and we said, how did you do this? And she said, well, it's your wrap, I just didn't understand how you did it, and I did it a different way, and this is how it came out. We said, but how'd you do it, how'd you do it? She goes, I don't know, I don't remember. Well, we figured it out, and we're bringing it to you, all right, because it's a wonderful cover-up for the beach, for a boat, you know, and I'm going to tell you that, um, you know, we had fabric there at the workshop. And in, in one particular case, because once we'd measured it, we're on the floor. We're all cutting and measuring you guys. We had a wonderful time. But anyway, we wanted to make sure that um, it was right and it was, it was the exact amount. And Penny was in the corner. And Penny had, you know, fabric she bought for a dollar a yard. And I cut off a half yard. So for 50 cents, we made the first one just to test it all out and see if it was right. And then when I came home, I, I got to make this one. And I love it. And I love this one because I really wanted the fabric to do something more. I wanted the fabric to do the bias that it does in the back. And so I just love it. This is 100% cotton. I just love it. But anyway, I do want to bring it to you. It is courtesy of Georgia. Georgia said we could all share in it. And I'd really encourage you to share this, especially with some friends who don't sew. Or you can use it for gifts. For the holidays or just to say thanks to a neighbor who's been really nice to you this project will it'll probably take you 30 minutes to get through it okay so you ready you can't email me on this we're just gonna lay it out we're gonna lay it out really easily and we're gonna do it you can change the length of the fabric the length of this fabric is gonna be 58 inches the one I have on I did 60 the wider the fabric, you'll see it'll go down longer on your arms. If you make it less, it'll kind of come up a little bit, okay? So 58 inches is the length of the fabric this way. The width of the fabric is gonna be 22 inches, and I would stick with that. I've tried a couple that were different, and I stick with 22. So we've got 22 by 58. So now what you're realizing is the fabric can be woven, knit, combination it can be anything you want it to be the fabric should have drape to it that's the most important thing for me i wash this in a coca-cola and so it has it's wonderful it's soft it's just wonderful i love it i love it you're not going to get me out of it so anyway i'm really happy with it um throw it in the coca-cola and then throw it in the dryer 50 it was 60 inches wide i left it at 60 i did not and the reason i did that is because of the Selvages were, were beautiful and I didn't want to cut off those selvages. So I went selvage to selvage in only 22 inches. So you see that a half a yard, a little more than a half a yard will get you one wrap. If, if the fabric is not wide enough and you have to go length, then usually with the width you can get two wraps by the time you get that length done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an A on this side and an A on this side. Now this was Connie. Connie, <laughs> I have to give credit where credit is due because you guys, these guys were just going at it and really figuring it all out so I could teach it the best to you guys and get the fewest amount of emails. <laughs> so we have A and A on both ends because those two A's, they're going to fold together. So you're going to fold it the length of the fabric, not the width. The 22 inches is going to stay right here and here you have your fold over here. Okay, then the other markings you're gonna have is you're gonna have a B down in this corner once you folded it. You're gonna have a C up in this corner once you folded it. On the back page, you're gonna have a C here and a B here, okay? Now, we don't have to really ask questions. All you gotta do is play this thing over and over until you got it, because it's really, really easy. Once we figured it out, 
Once we figured, we thought like Georgia thought, we went through what Georgia did, we got it. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I folded it in half. It doesn't matter if it's right sides together or wrong sides together because both sides are gonna show, so it doesn't make any difference. You're gonna take the width of the fabric and you're gonna fold it up to the top. So you're gonna form just a little bias fold right there, but it's only the width that you're gonna use. Don't do any more, just the width. And actually you're gonna take that that you've just folded and you're gonna take away the piece that it's laying against and sew it to the back. So you're gonna put this right there. You're gonna sew this right there. Not to the piece it's folding on, but to the piece behind it. You can see that this piece in here is loose. So we're gonna do that one more time. You're gonna fold this up, not to the front. You're gonna fold it up, but you're gonna sew it to the back. And take this corner right there, and take this corner just where it stops, and you're gonna sew that on a sewing machine. That's it. What you're gonna see is this corner right there is gonna be the back that's hanging down here. And all you gotta do is open it up, it's gonna open up, you're gonna stick your head through it, it's gonna automatically twist in the front. So let me give you a couple things because I've made several of them and I'll tell you kind of snafus. Okay, the first thing you are is keep in mind that I did mine the width of the fabric this way. So this was a selvage, it was finished. This was a selvage, it was finished. I finished this edge and I finished this edge. Before you start, finish the edges. It doesn't matter how you finish them according, like for instance, a sheer would be beautiful. I mean, I went through probably 10 of the fabrics we have. They would all work. They would all be great. They just would be different. So I went through and thought, okay, if I did a, if I did a sheer, I would roll it twice and do a nice thin seam. Um, if I did this, I would serge, you know, just depending on what the fabric looked like, what I would do as far as finishing the seams go. Because this one's a multicolored and because the edges are just so um, even, I surged it and left it. I didn't turn it under, I didn't want any bulk there, I just left it exactly like it was. What I'm saying to you is finish all your edges first and just think through what finish you would like best depending on what the fabric's like. It'd be so cute to have fringe on these. You could have fringe everywhere. That would, that's another thing that went through my mind. You could take and, you know, with a cotton knit, how you pull and make the little uh, fringe with the cotton knit. You could do that and then sew it back on. So you guys, my job is to give you the ideas. Your job is to like blow them up and show everybody on Facebook. So this we're calling George's wrap. So if you, um, start to post it somewhere, whatever, and Georgia is J-O-R-J-A, not the, like the state. J-O-R-J-A, two J's. All right, so we're gonna finish it all. You're gonna take the A's and you're gonna fold them together. You're gonna take this, you're gonna fold it up, and don't sew it to the first layer, sew it to the back layer, and you're done. That's it. Georgia's wrap. Are we good? The other way we can wear it, and we kind of played around with it, is you can actually take this twist and you can turn it and put it on your shoulder. You could put a little brooch here or something like that, and then the long triangle goes down to the side. And if you do it that way, it covers up a little bit more in the front, shows off a little bit more on the side, just kind of depending on what you want to do and how you want to wear it. But there's lots of different ways and it's just fun, just really fun. And it's, it was really fun because when she said to me, this is your wrap, you know, I gave her that typical look like, okay, newbie, okay, Miss Newbie, that's not mine. You've watched somebody else. It belongs to somebody else. But it's that same basic pieces. It was just put together a little differently. I just loved it. We had a lot of fun. Okay, questions. Could you take off your wrap and show us the seam? I don't think I need to take it off, but I will show you the seam. Let me show you. I'm going to put it back where it is because when you go to put it on, that's a really good question, by the way. Um, the seam is back. It's right here. So you're going to see. Can they see that seam? Right here, Brett? No, not really, but I'm going to get as close. 
The seam goes from right here and it goes back over the side, like to right here. And the reason it doesn't help you to take it off is because it just becomes a big mess if you take it off. It completely loses every reference point if I take it off. It just won't, it won't help you at all. Believe me, we had it off for a long time at the conference, the workshop. So your, your seam is going to angle and it's going to go at an angle across your back. The seam is back here and then the point goes down. Once you've sewn it and you go to put it on, just put the point at the back. The rest will twist. It'll all fall into line. Don't make it any harder than it is. Okay? All right. We're not going to print it as a pattern. We're not going to, uh, you know, that's it. This is it. George's wrap. You saw it here first. We saw it in Pinehurst. I think everybody in the workshop probably already has at least one they've made. Right, you guys? Right, Sue, Elizabeth, everybody? All right, when working with 195, I've tried to adjust this way back, but the pattern in the center back is crooked. What should I do when cutting the blouse and keeping the center back on fold? That's actually a knit top. All you're gonna do is, um, let's just say that this is the, give me just a minute and I'll create this for you. Okay, let's just say that's the sweater set. I know that's really bad. Your sway back uh, goes like this. You overlap it here. And I'm kind of exaggerating that so you'll see that it's uh, a little crooked. I mean, you know, so that's crooked there. And then what I'm going to do, and again, I'm just using this so you can see. I'm going to put this point right here on the straight. And I'm going to put this point on the straight and you'll see that there'll be a little extra added right there. And that's not a big deal because if you don't want it, you can take it off the side seam. You can curve the side seam in a little bit more. Um, and if you do want it, you can just leave it and you can always take it off after the fact. So I wouldn't necessarily worry about if it changes anything or harms anything. But once you take out that sway back, draw a straight line from the base of the neck to the hem, just do it straight so you can still put on the fold. Okay? Could it be done in a linen knit? It can be done in any fabric that you think drapes well. Period. Your choice, your fabrics. I did it in, a, in the plaid and in the check because I loved, I knew thinking through the pattern and how it worked that this point here would end up on the bias and I knew it'd be just really really exciting so that's why I did it because I felt like it probably might not be something you would think of you would go to solids the fabric needs to be double sided you want to be able to like both sides of it the only other thing I could think in contrast to that is when you did this this piece right here the whole thing was a tube where you had both sides were, were the same side. So that way if you chose a fabric that you that was not double sided, you could put the two sides, the two wrong sides together, create one long piece that was right sides on both sides, and then go ahead and make the wrap because you'd end up with a double layer. But if if it was a sheer and both sides um, you know, if both sides weren't right, you could put the wrong sides together and still make the whole thing look like it was two-sided. So you could do that, and I thought about that. On the swing dress, do you cut out the dart before you sew it? No. No, I don't know, to be honest. I don't think so. The directions will tell you. But I can't remember if it's a French, I don't think it's a French dart. It's just a regular dart, I believe, on the swing dress. But look through the directions and the directions will tell you. And if not, email me privately and I will help you, okay? All right, so we're excited. We are, um, you have plenty of active wear now. You guys will look great everywhere you go. Put your tags in because I'm telling you, when you get a pair of pants like this, I figured out that without my tag, it took me twice as long to get dressed because I'm like, okay, which way's the front, which way's the back? The tag is so easy. So we've got tags. If you don't have tags, if you do have tags, 
stick a piece of elastic, do something. It's so much easier than to go back and forth and figure out what's the front and the back. All right, so from Silhouette Patterns, we're saying to all of you all, happy sewing and really enjoy your time and we'll see you in two weeks. All right, thanks, bye.